Good morning. Good morning. Happy May. It's finally here. Spring has arrived. We can start planting our gardens, hopefully, for those that like to plant vegetables and or flowers. Yay. That's great. You know, I wanted to thank Miss Connie for doing our bringing in the lights every morning. Um, and thank for each and every one that came to church today. We appreciate you being here to support the church and doing what you can in your own way. Um, last week went really well. Pastor Tim and Joanna were on vacation, and Eddie, he did our sermon for us and did a wonderful job. We wanted to thank Eddie for that. Um, each and every one of us has our own part in the church, and um, it takes a village sometimes to keep things going, but we appreciate each and every one that does their part. So at this time, for the call to worship, um, George is going to help us with that. Call to worship. Leader, the living creator, the world king with your beauty and abound with your artistic and grace. We sing, sing your praises, praises Lord, as, as we celebrate, celebrate the risen Christ. risen Christ. Celebrate the risen Christ who walk with us as we traverse the joys and fears of our lives. We, we sing, sing your praises, praises Lord, as, as we celebrate the risen Christ. Christ. Now may we have the open prayer. God of power and might, let your love shine on us and through us. Through us. Take, 
take the blindness from our eyes and our hearts. Give us the joy of knowing and serving you in all that we say, think, and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, uh, Liz will have our thought for the day in our New Testament reading. Our thought from the day comes from not only, uh, let's see, Chronicles 16, verse 9, but uh, it also ties in with our Sunday school lesson. Uh, Chronicles 16, verse 9 says, God's eyes are looking over the earth, looking for someone he can show themselves as strong in his name. Are you loyal, committed, dedicated, faithful? Or does God look down upon us and see us separated by walls that we have made ourselves? We were talking about walls in our life, and everybody knows about the physical laws. Uh, home, field, jail, everybody knows those. But how about the mental ones? Pride, prejudice, fear. Are we scared to try something new? Are we scared of the unknown? Are we scared of the misunderstandings? So that is our job this uh, time to build bridges of understanding so that we can carry God's word out into the world. Our New Testament is Acts 9, uh, starting with verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going alone and appro approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Should you really be doing this? Or? <laughs> the spirit is willing, the flesh is a little weak. Amen. <laughs> so it's good to see all of you today here in worship. Um, uh, I, I, I feel a little out of sync having been gone for two weeks. Uh, uh, among other things, I realized I left my cross at the parsonage this morning, so... Um, and I got some things wrong in the bulletin, uh, but you know it doesn't need a you don't need a vacation to do those kind of things either. So, so but it's uh, good to to have some time away. Uh, we learned some uh, very interesting things in Williamsburg, especially about the church in uh, colonial America. And so I did put together a. a virtual service for those of y'all that have internet access to, uh, it shared some of those things. Uh, that one went online yesterday. Uh, but I, I was uh, blessed to have all three churches covered when I was gone. I give thanks to Eddie for, for covering uh, worship here. Uh, and I discovered that in all three cases, uh, the message, while each one was different, it actually pulled upon our Easter message of uh, who are the witnesses. And so uh, Eddie gave the familiar Thomas story. Uh, I call Thomas the reluctant witness sometimes. Uh, but, uh, and, and so we continued with that Easter message. And you know what? I got this idea of starting a new worship series that will carry us up through uh, Pentecost. And the series is called, guess what, Who Are the Witnesses? And today we're witnessing the future. 
Um, there are many witnesses to the risen Christ, uh, some of the more popular ones that you know of. The, there's that story of the road to Emmaus, uh, where Jesus walks up behind two uh, disciples who have left Jerusalem. Uh, my favorite one is Jesus grilling fish on an open fire on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. There were dozens and maybe even hundreds of sightings of the risen Jesus. We have many witness stories, and we're not going to cover any of those during this series. <laughs> so we're going to look at different ways that uh, the risen Christ was, was uh, uh, witnessed, and uh, maybe learn some and look at some scripture that isn't normally looked at at this time. So I'm excited. I hope you are. And uh, so we begin today our, our journey of Eastertide. That's an old school uh, term. I like it. So we, we have five Sundays remaining of Eastertide. And uh, uh, I guess coming off of vacation, I tend to be a little out of sync. And so I forgot to welcome our internet worshipers uh, here in Batesville. Uh, we're, we're here for the, the month of May, and uh, it's a blessing to have you worship with us. And we hope that you will find a blessing uh, in joining us at this time of worship. So our second uh, New Testament lesson today comes from the book of Revelation, and I'll be reading from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They circled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we give you thanks for this time to come together. We give you thanks for the gift of these words for us today. And, and we pray as we reflect upon these words, as we consider them in our, our contemporary lives, uh, that it will be the message you have for us today that remains in our minds. We ask this in your name. Amen. So I don't know if you uh, took a chance to uh, look at the illustration on the front of our bulletin today. Um, maybe it drew some attention. Did it make you wonder what this is? Uh, the picture is a little surreal, wouldn't you say? Uh, you know, surreal is bizarre, strange, uh, something that's not really expected. Yeah, we, as we gather in worship, we have to acknowledge that God is infinite and that the universe is infinite. And somewhere in all of that infinity, there might be other surreal uh, images that kind of look like this. But I think for today, we would have to acknowledge that this image probably only exists in the Photoshop files of a digital artist somewhere. Many see the book of Revelation that John uh, recorded for us during his exile on the island of Patmos as being surreal. How many of you have dealt into Revelation and read Revelation? Did you 
find it surreal? Did it seem a little bizarre? Uh, the text that I read for you this morning may not you know, really fit into that, but, but if you have ventured into Revelation, you have encountered some other of John's witness of a scroll with seven seals, a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes, thousands upon thousands of angels, huge multitudes gathered, all wearing white robes, Strange happenings at the sounding of trumpets. And then, of course, there's those fire-breathing horses with heads that look like lions. Bizarre. The list goes on. Bizarre, surreal, and frankly, it's kind of creepy, don't you think? And I believe God would forgive us for thinking that because we have limited vision. We're limited by the vision of humans in this world. What did Jesus tell Pilate when he was on trial? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So I'm going to take a chance this morning. Are any Star Trek fans here? <laughs> oh, good. Some hands go up. Well, even if you're not a Star Trek fan, we all probably remember and have heard of the pointy-eared Mr. Spock, the half-human, half-Vulcan science officer on the Starship Enterprise. And even though he was only half-Vulcan, he still had that gift of being able to do a mind meld. A mind meld. And you recall he would place his fingers on the side of someone's head in certain locations. And he could create some sort of a sharing of thoughts between the two of them. It, it, it was almost as if those that were involved in this mind meld could peer into each other's minds and see memories, and to, to actually experience their thoughts. Now, I know this is science fiction, okay? I, I know that it, but who's to say there aren't Vulcans somewhere in an infinite universe? It all came from the uh, uh, thinking mind of uh, the American author Gene Roddenberry. Okay, so yes, it's fiction. But humor me for a moment as I read to you John's preamble for the revelation. And this is from chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who testifies to everything he saw. That is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. When I read that, I, I just can't, help but think about the fictional Vulcan mind meld. It's almost as if uh, uh, this, this angel sent to John becomes a conduit uh, for this exchange between Jesus and John. But John's like us. He's at a disadvantage because he's confined to the context of this world. Remember again, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. So what I'm, I'm suggesting is that John is recording a vision for which he has no frame of reference. Revelation is creepy because John lacks the vocabulary necessary to describe these visions that he is encountering to describe those surreal and bizarre visions. 
He does the best he can with the tools that he has. He does the best he can as a human with a human vocabulary, trying to describe what is not of this world. So do you want to know the future? Uh, you know, that's a very common response this morning. Well, John gives us a glimpse of that future, as confusing and bizarre as it may seem. Do you want to know when all this comes to pass? Sorry, Jesus said that even he didn't know the time and place of when it would come to be. But despite that, there are those among us in this world who spend a lot of time in speculating the future. Uh, but we have to be careful because that speculation can mislead us. Martin Luther, the German priest and theologian from the 16th century, said that we should live as if Christ died yesterday, was risen today and is coming tomorrow. I think that bears repeating. We should live as if Jesus Christ died yesterday, was risen today, and is coming tomorrow. This is what it means to call ourselves Easter people, that we live in the knowledge of a risen Christ, we're on this side of the cross, but according to John, we'll soon be with a Christ returned. No speculation, no predicting, just living our lives now as if tomorrow will begin in glory. One of the, the readings that I found in preparing for today suggests that if you tell a new believer that Jesus is coming, they'll be excited and they'll say, when? But if you ask a seasoned Christian and tell them that Jesus is returning, you'll probably find yourself in some sort of deep theological discussion with them. And uh, what, what is your belief in the afterlife? And... And what do you see in those strange words of revelation? How do you see the end times and the new creation of the kingdom of God? We have a lot of committees in the Methodist church. <laughs> Sometimes I think we have too many committees. But as far as the return of Christ is concerned, there is no time and place committee. Don't even think about creating one. But you might think about creating an arrangements committee to be arranged and prepared. Because our mission as a church is to prepare both ourselves and those in our mission area for the coming Christ. I don't think that John is trying to fill in the blanks of the future with this glimpse that he gives us. I think instead he's inviting us to worship God, to worship God now, to join with those tens of thousands of tens of thousands of the angels that are singing praises to God. Worship is a corporate event. It's something that we do as we come together. We come together and we begin this drama. We play out this drama of worship as we sing, as we share our, our God sightings with each other, as we share our prayer concerns and our joys. I don't want to pop your bubble. But we don't do all of this. We don't sing, we don't pray, we don't share the word. We don't look at graphics on a bulletin for you. We do it for God. For God alone is worthy of our worship 
and praise and honor. Now we got Saul mixed in today with the scriptures and so we don't want to forget about Saul. Saul is another witness. He gives witness to God's purposeful activity in this world. You see, Paul's conversion wasn't just some novel thing that happened that the people in Damascus could gossip, gossip, uh, gossip about. God had a purpose for Saul. You always say, if God could use Saul, God can use anybody. And despite Saul's position in life at the time, God called Saul to be in ministry for God. We witness Saul's life in the, in the church, in his leadership of the church. How many churches did he found uh, during his life? But we also witness his suffering at the hands of others who were persecuting the church. Actually persecuting the church in much the same way that Saul was before his conversion. Our uh, New Testament would be a very thin volume if it weren't for all the writings and sharing that we have from Paul as he uh, writes to all the churches that he visited. So let's uh, recap our witnesses now. John gives witness to the risen Christ seated in the kingdom of God. And Paul gives witness to that same Christ, who I would say is still very much among us and calls us to mission and ministry to the world. For God, the, the past, the present, and the future are all the same. God isn't limited by the linear timeline that we live out our lives. And today we're invited by Christ to the table. The table where it is also timeless. It's a place where the saints of the past, present, and future are invited to gather together. A place that gives us a foretaste of that heavenly banquet. Today you're invited to also be witnesses as you join Jesus at the table. As you join him in the meal and you witness to that grace of the sacrament. And to God be the glory. Amen. So I invite you to uh, retrieve your communion liturgy from the bulletin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. During the week of his passion and death, we turned away from your Son, O God, even after Christ shared table with us, offering us the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. We shrank into the shadows, but we are here now, merciful one. As we profess the depth of our gratitude for being called as your disciples, may our living help heal the pain of Christ dying. Hear the good news. God who raised Jesus from the dead offers us life with Christ and forgiveness in his name. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the dinner was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, each of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts through your son Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, the bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to reveal the bread in the bottom of your cup. The body of Christ given for you. Now reveal the juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the witnesses, for those who experienced the risen Christ and who witnessed to his resurrection. We give you thanks for this meal that you have provided for us, hosted by your son, Jesus Christ, and give you thanks for his presence in this sacrament. We ask this in your name. Amen. So here are these words of benediction. 
Today we are witnesses. As we go forth, let us be those witnesses to the world that there is a risen Christ who promises to come again and be reigning in the kingdom of God in the new creation. Amen. Go forth in peace.